Hey, Issy here. Uh, today we're installing the NHD15 from Noctura into my PC, which has got the 3800X uh, Ryzen 7. I haven't got one of those 5000 series yet. It would be cool to have one, but to be honest, this has cost me enough so far, and because I'm not sponsored, I'm spending my own money to try and figure out how all this stuff works. So this is the first time I've installed a, um, a caller that's not just the standard Ryzen one that came in the box with it. So I haven't watched any videos to see how to do it. I thought, why don't I read the instructions for once and, and just experience what it's like to do it and hopefully figure my way through it. Fingers crossed it all works. If it doesn't, then I might be going straight to YouTube to try and figure out how to do this. But it looks pretty straightforward. It's, um, it doesn't look all that complex. I don't think I need to take out my motherboard from the whole unit. I have taken out the GPU. That's, oh, that's here. This monster of a thing. Just so I've got a bit more space to work with. But other than that, I've unplugged a couple of cables for the uh, CPU fan header and the LED light that goes with it. And then I'm going to try and install this, see how it goes, and here we go. Try it out. Okay, first, first things first, I've read the instructions. And because I've got an a, AMD, you can see here, maybe you can't see it, I'll take a screenshot. But the, um, the back plate on it's already set up right, so I don't actually need to do anything for that. All I need to do is take off the stock cooler, which you can see hopefully here. Just remove, there's a few nuts here and here, or screws here and here, once I take the stock cooler off. Um, so now let's try and get into it. So you can see the stock cooler is that. This is the actual cooler we're trying to install. And fingers crossed it will fit when I shut the case. It's got a glass panel case, so fingers crossed it does, and if it doesn't, then I guess I'll be buying a new case as well. So the first job was to actually get the case on its side, try and take out the current cooler, which was only a couple of clips, and then also try and check the bottom just to make sure that the thermal paste was all off the chip, prep it ready for the new cooler. Little did I know that I probably didn't need to take the RAM out, but again, first time, didn't watch any videos, so I was just learning as I was going and sort of figuring it out. And then it was time to get rid of the thermal paste that was actually just left on the CPU from the previous cooler. I didn't have any rubbing alcohol, so I just used the paper cloth to dry and then just worked my way just getting as much as I could off the actual CPU. And then it was time to remove the current CPU cooler mounts and install the included ones for the NH D15. This is where I tripped up a little bit because I took them all out, forgetting there's actually a back plate on, on the back of the motherboard that you screw this into. So when I took all the screws out, the actual mount that actually holds the um, CPU cooler mounts in place fell down. I wasn't actually able to grab it with the screws. So in hindsight, I think next time I'd put two screws in, change one mount and then put the other two screws in and then change the other mount without having to worry about lifting it up and holding it on its side. So I actually got my partner to hold the back plate for me while I could screw it in. Now if you just had left two screws in, you wouldn't have to do this process, which would save you probably about five minutes and a, a little bit of stress. Now it's time to put some thermal paste back onto the chip getting ready for the new uh, Noctua fan. And um, here's where the instruction says four to five mil dot in the middle of the um, chip and then just press down the, the container. And I was skeptical, I've looked at a few videos and they're like, you know, put a cross, put a dot, put four dots, whatever. I just trusted what they said, put it on and I haven't yet to take it off again, but I'm experiencing temperatures now in idle of 38, 36 when it was 45 before, so I'm assuming that there's enough spread from that dot onto the actual um, chip. So then finally it's time to put the actual cooler onto those mounts. When you screw the screws down, they've got little springs in them, so at start, they're not going to feel like they're grabbing that much, but you just got to trust the process. Three screws to four on one side, and then do the other side three or four times. Repeat that process until the actual cooler pulls itself down and locks itself flat. The only risk you can do is I think if you screw one side all the way and then do the other side, you're going to probably find that there's going to be like a push out of that thermal paste um, more so to one side just because of how you've screwed it down. So try and keep an even pressure both left and right or top and bottom or however you look at it until that is flat down. So in my hands are the little mounts that you connect to the fans that then subsequently connect to the heat sinks on the CPU cooler. And then the other little part there is the actual Y splitter which goes from a two connections to the each fan down to my motherboard which only has one input. Or you've got the option in the box as well which is the, the quieter version which limits the top RPMs that the actual fans can produce which cuts down the sound that they can also make as well. So I'm just putting the RAM back into the actual motherboard. I forgot to put it in the first time, put the fan on, thought, oh, that looks great, and then realized that it wasn't on. 
When I put the fan back on after the RAM's installed, there's a little bit of an offset, which I thought was a bit of stress, but because the fans are 144 or 140 mil, it actually covers the whole heat sink anyway, and the, the airflow and, and temperature seem to not really be affected, especially once I've got the big fans blowing towards them. And then back in the graphics card goes, uh, and then also need to install the Elgato capture card underneath that as well. And as you can see, there's not much clearance between the actual fan and the motherboard, but thankfully, uh, with good airflow so far, I actually haven't had any issues in terms of thermals increasing from the graphics card. To be honest, that graphics card is pretty cool running. It runs at a max of like 66 degrees when I put it under massive load. So from day-to-day -day usage, it's not hitting anything above 40. Talking performance, Temperatures have dropped from about 45 degrees down to about 36 to 37 on idle and I'm not seeing anything above 69, 70 degrees under full load. In terms of the actual sound quality that, or decibels that are coming out of my case now, that's probably the biggest difference. I'm not hearing that horrible whine and um, sharp audio sort of pitch that comes from 100mm fan blasting trying to keep that CPU cool with these two big fans it's quite a low hum and it actually isn't all that irritating for long periods of time which is amazing and that's pretty much the video thanks so much if you're still here watching it um, it was a good experience for me not watching any of these other youtubers or videos on how to install them and actually just reading the instructions that come in the box now there's about four different versions of the instructions because there's ones for the ARM and then also ones for the Intel CPUs. So just make sure you get the right manuals and then also check and make sure that you're compatible or your CPU and your motherboard are compatible with that type of cooler. There's a couple out there. Other than that, it's still going strong. It's still pretty quiet and um, that's it. Until next time, peace. Oh, I can't do peace. That's Marcus Brownlee. Namaste. Ha ha ha.